Now today what we're looking at is food production. Now by the end of this video, hopefully we, we want to define what mycoprotein is. We then want to go on to describe the conditions needed to produce mycoprotein. And then after that we want to evaluate mycoprotein as a useful food for vegetarians. So let's get right into it. Now if we're looking at mycoprotein, we've got a growing population. That growing population means that we need more and more food. And in particular, today we're looking at more and more protein. Not only for the humans, but we need more and more protein to feed to our animals. So we need to, we need to come up with um, different ways of making this protein because we can't just rely on our livestock. Don't forget we said having an increasing amount of cattle is affecting the environment as well. So how can we create protein without actually using animals? Now scientists have come up with an amazing way, and that's by using mycoprotein. Now, mycoprotein is uh, made when we use a fungus. Now this fungus, the key word here for you guys, is fusarium. All right? This fusarium uh, fungus grows very, very fast and it has branch-like structures, okay? And these branch-like structures end up feeling and tasting and having a similar texture to meat, okay? It's very, very rich in protein and therefore it can be used as a meat substitute, okay? It has nothing to do with animals, so it's also good for vegetarians, all right? So um, a lot of the time you can see this in the supermarkets in the form of corn mints, maybe corn chicken, corn beef, etc. All right, guys? Now, mycoprotein, as we said, is very, very high in protein, so it can be used as, a health, as part of a healthy diet, okay? And it's also good for vegetarians. Now, we need to look at how mycoprotein is actually made, all right? And in particular, how we harvest this fusarium fungus. Now, what we do is we put the fusarium into a fermenter. Now, the, fum the fusarium for this process, in order for them to grow rapidly, they need aerobic uh, conditions, and therefore oxygen is needed. Now, certain things need to happen in order to grow lots and lots of fusarium, okay? and um, get them to um, be used and dried out so that we can use them for meat, all right? Now, the first thing that happens is we put the fusarium into the fermenter, all right? And the context, of the content, whatever the fermenter is made of, it needs to be mixed and it needs to be harvested, okay? So it's constantly mixed, but we can't use a normal stirrer to mix this fusarium. It's quite simply because the branch-like structures, known as the hi-fi, okay, they're very delicate, and therefore if we use a sterile, we'll damage the um, hi-fi. Therefore, what we use is we use an air, air, and we pump air in to the fermenter, and that mixes the fusarium in by itself, okay? Now, this air mixes the fusarium and gets it going round, okay, until it's ready. Now, the whole growth process of this fusarium takes about six weeks, all right? And the nutrients are steadily pumped in. Now, in order for this micro fungus to grow, okay, it needs glucose. Now what we do is we get starch, and we get this starch from potatoes or cereal. We simply get it from potatoes or cereal, because potatoes and cereal are cheap to get, okay? And therefore this whole process is economically friendly. So what we do is we get the starch from the potatoes or cereal, okay? And we treat it with enzymes. These enzymes break the starch down into glucose, okay? And we, that is added to the fermenter. Now, ammonia is also needed because we need a source of nitrogen for this fusarium fungus to grow, okay? Now, the product of this whole process, what we want is we want the fungal body, okay, this fusarium body to grow, okay, and we want its biomass so that we can use this as meat, all right? Now, this is the end product, okay? We have a high-protein meat substitute, which is not, does not come from animals, okay? It comes from a fungus, all right? And it's that high fi okay, the body structures that grow together. So, hopefully by the end of this video, you're able to, one, define... The, uh, what mycoprotein is. You're then able to describe the conditions needed to produce mycoprotein, and then after that, you're able to evaluate mycoprotein as a useful. Is it useful for vegetarians? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and revise. Mr. Ashoni, signing up.